We'll turn it. Let me make sure it's on there. No? Yes, there we go. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mallory Martin. I'm the artistic director for the Cleveland International Film Festival. And let me welcome you all again to Playhouse Square. Finally, we finally made it. And we're so excited to see all of you in person again. I'd like you to all help me welcome back out to the stage the director of Peace by Chocolate, Jonathan Kaiser, as well as actors Mark Camacho and Lauren Petra. So I have a few questions to start, but we are taking questions from the audience tonight as well. There's two mics at the front aisles for anybody that wants to come down and ask the group a question. So Jonathan, my first question for you is this was your first time you said watching the film all the way through with a live audience. How was it? It was great. You guys laughed a lot, which was good. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, this is festival 30 something on our tour and I still haven't watched the film fully with an audience. I think it's just a tortured creator. You always just wanna change everything you see. <laughs> so, but it was awesome that it was with you guys because you thought it was funny, so it was good. <laughs> and like Marcy had said earlier, this is your second time in Cleveland uh, with winning our award before for your first doc documentary feature, What Would Beethoven Do in 2016? And now you're back here with your first narrative feature. What have you been doing in between? Can you talk to us about how you found this story? Sure, this really came out of, uh, you know, a, a campaign promise, really. So Trudeau was uh, campaigning in 2015 and it was in the height of the news cycle of the Syrian war, which is still going on, but we don't talk about it anymore. Um, and he said, I'm gonna bring 50,000 refugees in by the end of the year. It was October, he gets elected, he has two months to bring 50,000 people in. And the whole country is watching what's going to happen. And the Hotheads were one of the very first families to come to Nova Scotia, and the local news was doing this kind of monthly check-in to see, well, what's gonna happen? And uh, they were looking for a really hard-hitting story, <laughs> and this was the opposite kind of story. It was a really l lovely, uplifting story, and I thought, this is, this is exactly what I want to export. I live in L.A. I was in the L.A. at the time, and I really missed home, and I said, this is, this is what I want to represent about Nova Scotia and Canada. Oh, I love that. And Mark, you play Frank in the film, um, and you have a really wonderful relationship. <laughs> Thanks. You have a really wonderful relationship your character does with, with Isam in the film, um, much more like brothers than friends, as we saw. And um, sadly, as we also saw, Hatam Ali passed away in 2020. Can you talk a little bit about your relationship with Hatam and what it was like to translate over into your character's relationship? Yeah, um, uh, working, working with, uh, with, with him was absolutely amazing. Um, I, I wasn't aware, but he was, he's a, also, he was a, an incredible director, um, world-renowned director. Um, but in a way, uh, in a way, our relationship was kind of similar to the real, uh, to the real guys in that, um, you know, there was the language barrier, of course. And one of the first scenes we shot, I, I, I like talking about this, uh, was the, the shoveling uh, scene. It was a lot of fun. He, he, he didn't, how many times did we, did we do that? He did not want to shovel the snow in my face. He wouldn't do it. He was too polite. He was. He didn't, you know, he kept apologizing before doing it. I said, dude, it's, it's really only snow. So finally, um, <laughs> I just took a huge shovel full and I put it in my own face. And, um, <laughs> and, and, and that made the cut. <laughs> but, uh, no, he was an, he was an incredible guy. Uh, and even through language barriers, we would have conversation about film, and uh, he was um, he, he was it was such a, a learning experience working with him. And Laurent, you play Liam in the film, uh, which brings a really great <laughs> I think was a really great comedic character in the film for sure. And you do stand up comedy too, correct? Uh, I dabble. <laughs> 
Can you talk about maybe like what was one of your favorite comedic lines from the film or scenes or how, what that was like? One of my comedic moments didn't make its way into this film, but Jonathan, you, you, you wanted me to do a bit of improv, so I had to pretend, uh, well, I, I had to be in the busyness of completing all those orders, and then I, I just, you unleashed the, the comedy within me, and uh, I just uh, had a Lucille Ball moment where I was, uh, there was too many chocolates to put in the order, so I just started putting a couple in my mouth, and then there were several in my mouth, and then there were too many in my mouth, so I collapsed on the floor, and then someone came to give me a bag so I could spit it out, but then I was still hungry, so I grabbed some more chocolate. We couldn't put this in the film, unfortunately, but it gives me great joy every time I watch it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I feel like eating a bunch of chocolates probably is not the worst part of the job <laughs> at yeah. one point. But you had also said that, um, speaking of language barriers, too, there were three different languages spoken among the cast and, and crew. Can you talk a little bit about what that was like, how challenging that was for you all? Yeah, I mean, making a film, um, first of all, so I'm, I'm the Canadian part of this <laughs> film, but making a film in a culture you don't really know much about is really, it's tricky because you want to do it right. You want to make sure that anybody who's watching from that part of the world thinks this is, you know, this is a good film. <laughs> you know, like, they're, they're doing their job. So Hatem had said to me when he signed on, he said, I will do this as long as everyone is, uh, who is an Arab role is from, D from Syria, has a Damascus accent, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and is, you know, going to be there and has is, is lived the experience. So finding Syrians who have a Damascus accent in Montreal in the middle of the winter with, you know, a few weeks lead time, kind of a tall tale, you know, for me to fulfill. But we did, and everybody in the film who is uh, playing a Syrian part is actually a refugee themselves. They all had to only be in the country for a, a year. And uh, Najla, the daughter, had literally just arrived. She hardly spoke English, you know, and, and, and that was one of the tricky things is none of us spoke the same language. Half the shoot was in one location, a 17-room Victorian mansion right on the water. And, you know, when you move, you burn through money making films. So we just like, how many locations can we fit into this little house, this big house? And <laughs> so we got to all be together, you know? No trailers, nothing, you know? You just pick a room, that's kind of your, <laughs> your deal. And uh, that really forces a lot of communication. And the crew is completely French. Quebecois, <laughs> I'm the English part, and then we had Arabic, and no one spoke the same language. So it'd be like, hey you, can you tell him to, okay, sure, all right, all right, all right we gotta go now. <laughs> and so it was just uh, a testament to, I think, the message of the film, that if you're coming together, we all know why we're there, right? We're to tell the story, and we're to make a great film, and you don't need to speak the same language to do that, <laughs> right? <laughs> Despite all the confusion. Yeah. <laughs> And Mark and Laurent, how did you two come to the film? Was it, did you know Jonathan before, or were, was it a casting call? Laurent and I? Yeah, yeah, sure. We, we would uh, we'd run into each other at auditions. We always go in for the same character, yes. right? I mean, clearly, <laughs> we're very similar types. Same type of so, yeah. It was really so. hard to choose between the two. You, I, I, I auditioned for, for that role originally, and then yeah. Jonathan said, why don't you try reading Frank? Uh, no, we, we, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty close-knit uh, community, acting community in, uh, in Montreal. Um, and so Lana and I would, uh, would run into each other in the studio uh, quite a bit. Yeah, we didn't know Jonathan before, but we're really grateful we do know him now. Both of these guys, as soon as I saw him, I said, that's it. <laughs> well, for, you, you know, I was auditioning for his role. Oh, yes, of yeah. course, of course. And then I had to make the great switch. Of course, of course. <laughs> Can you give us a little update about the Haddad family at this point? Or the, it sound, you said at the end of the film that Tarek still had not gone to medical school. Is that still a goal of his? Does he want to stay with the family business? I don't think it is a goal of his. I mean, I won't really speak for Tarek, but you know, we stay in touch and the family's uh, seeing the film, is very supportive of it. It's having a wide uh, release in theaters in Canada and a few in the United States uh, coming up soon. And you know, ugh. This is a story of, of want versus need, you know? It's seeing that sometimes you really, really, really want something and that's not really what is right for you. And I think he's grown through the process of, you know, building the business to find that he can do what he wanted to do in medicine.
through as a, you know as a peace advocate, as somebody who can talk about their story and and inspire others. And if anything, he's reaching more people doing that. So, you know, I'm very proud of that. And and the business is doing awesome. There are over a thousand stores across Canada. They uh, you know they've you know the big thing is you know you, you know refugees are going to come take your jobs. These people actually made lots of jobs. They've employed people who are unemployed in Nova Scotia. Right, and it's just incredible to see the the business continue to grow. Right, so uh, this is your first narrative feature. Uh, do you think that you'll continue to make narrative features? Go back to documentary. What's on the horizon for you at this point? I mean, this was pretty fun, so I think <laughs> I think I'd like to do it again. <laughs> um, but you know, <laughs> thank you. Um, but you know, coming from a documentary background, this is my first narrative, so you know, the crew was gonna kill me. They were like, you wanna shoot 360 degrees and have everything lit all the time and move around and let, them, let the actors do whatever they want? They're like, you're crazy. Because <laughs> in doc, you just move the camera where you want, and you're out of the way, and it's very intimate, but this film had a lot of those qualities, right? You get to meet the real people. You get to figure out what the emotional truth of this story is. You know, it's not factually accurate 100%. It's pretty close but it is emotionally true, right? That is very, I, and I believe that, and I've, it's been reaffirmed by everybody who's from this town who's watched it. You know, Frank's daughter came up to me after she saw it and she said, you totally got my dad. I was like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was very satisfying because you, you, you try to do right. You know, you don't want them to be upset about what you, your portrayal, right? right? And so you two are based in Montreal, correct? I'm based in Toronto now. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I went where they wanted to go. Okay. And it was shot in Montreal mostly, right? Or entirely? It was mostly shot in Montreal, but we did do a very brief second unit in Antigonish, Nova Scotia, in the middle of a snowstorm. Uh, <laughs> so that was, that was myself and uh, our cinematographer out in the middle of the night <laughs> getting shots. So that's what I was going to ask, is if you'd ever been to Antigonish, but it sounds like you have. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, many times to meet the family and do interviews and, you know, just gather as much as you can. Okay, well, thank you guys so much uh, for being here. I think that uh, it's time for us all to go eat some of this chocolate, uh, which we will have at the gala. We want to thank all of you for being here, sharing your beautiful film with us. Thank Dollar Bank and Playhouse Square. Thank you guys.